Welcome to this week's Behind the Poem. You're probably going to hear the rain that is causing flooding in Brooklyn. And that's just going to be our ambient background noise. Um, I really fucking hated this week. This week fucking sucked for me. Um, I'm just going to be honest about that. I, I loathed most of the week. And I wanted to do certain poems that I thought would like help me emerge from the hellscape. And I've already done those poems in previous episodes of Behind the Poem. So I'm going to share a poem that I wrote uh, many months ago. It's called Them. It was inspired by a conversation I was having with someone <laughs> I was hooking up with for a few months. And... <laughs> Uh, we were having a conversation about systemic oppression, as one does before <laughs> whatever. And um, and anyway, we were talking about the proverbial them, when people are like, well, they this and that, you know, and these people. And, um, and so he tasked me with writing a poem called Them. And so I did. I wrote a poem called Them. And... I just want to say a, a brief more, a moment of preface, you know, there is so much divisive history in um, people, entire groups and demographics being called them, in, in the proverbial them, in terms of like, um, if we think specifically of Euro oppression, um, the Euro oppression of indigenous folks is erasure the Euro oppression of Africans is exploitation. The Euro oppression of Jews is scapegoating. And I'm always thinking of them as the like, the people with the most power in a white supremacist, Christian hegemonic capitalist world. That's like the them I'm often interrogating. So. Here we go. <laughs> Them. I'm going to hold the camera and look at the iPad on my window because the rain is super loud if I put my camera where I usually do. So that's a little behind the scenes of behind the poem. Uh, them. <laughs> on a bad day, I am myself one. Like the time Kay stood in the doorway at the edge of the classroom at the Greenfield Intercultural Center on 37th and Chestnut and shook her head. We were talking about struggle and the stock market was teetering on a particular kind of crash. But what did I know yet? I was over a decade away from Medicaid, my tuition fully paid for. The bellman at the Four Seasons in Manhattan had still very recently known me by name. It's easier to point a finger, blame the rest of the roster for their proximity to wealth, power, whiteness. No one cares what the Nazis will do to you when your bank account is full, or used to be, even though they sent those people to Auschwitz too. We have always been surviving and the money seems to make us think it'll do the trick. Eric Ward said most white people don't stay up at night wondering if they are white. They know they are. I stay up at night wondering if I am white and what to call myself having grown up upper class and then my tax bracket said poverty for a while, but the access never goes away even when the loot is inconsistent because I can still call a relative and I'll be totally set. But them? I think they're the ones that never have to question who they are. Never have to wonder what the label is because the labels all defaulted to them from jump. The ones who gave me eyes for being a Jew, called me fat like it was sport. They are the ones with the noisemakers. We shake the groggers at Purim when we celebrate the massacre in Persia like it's a notable way to dress up and give each other gifts. Do you know about Purim and the massacre in Persia? Purim, the day that commemorates Esther saving the Jews from annihilation. We dress in costume. 
We give each other gifts. We read the story of Purim itself in a text called the Megillah, and we are supposed to get so drunk we forget the name of the man called Haman, one of them who tried to kill all of the Jews. But sometimes it becomes a footnote, the part about the 75,000 people the Jews killed in order to save themselves. So that's the cute ongoing reminder that when Palestine is under occupation, anyone can be a them. And yet I had to tell you the story of Purim. I bet you know everything about white Jesus what he ate for an afternoon or even mid-morning snack. Bet you know the story of Columbus and the results when someone fancies themselves a palpable God. And maybe you know, like I know, that Jesus wasn't white. And here we are at the altar of hegemony, the only narrative we've got. They, those people, them, they will roost us on the spigot. They will castrate us for a meal. They will fossilize our sentiments and pillage our minds in broad daylight. And yet, someone somewhere is thirsting for a win. Someone somewhere out there is telling you that I am them, the ones. They are the ones controlling the language. So, fucking run. Thank you so much for tuning in. Happy full moon in Aries. And may your weekend ahead be filled with joy and light. Whatever weather is happening wherever you are in the world, I hope there is some calm and love and connection to you and yourself and your loved ones and the world around. Take care.